Hi, I'm Salt Lake City Mayor Erin Mendenhall, and like so many families around the state of Utah, as we're deep into the third wave of the COVID pandemic, we're grappling with how to celebrate the holidays in the most fun way, but definitely the most safe way that we possibly can. So I've been having these fun conversations with different community leaders about how they and their household are gonna maybe do the holidays different this year. The CDC gave us direct advice as Americans just last week to say, please do not travel for the Thanksgiving holiday if you can avoid it and celebrate with the members of your immediate household. So I'm pleased and honored to have Gail Miller of the Larry Miller Group with us here today. Hi, Gail, thanks for being here. Hi, Mayor, nice to be here with you. Thank you for the opportunity. Tell me a little bit about what your holidays might be looking like compared to the way they traditionally would. Well, very different, of course. A lot of people are doing things differently. I have a very large family but we are staying safe and we're not gathering together in one group this year. So I have five children and I think each of them will convene their own family together, <clears throat> but maybe not, I don't know for sure. But I know for my household, it will just be me and my husband and we'll cook our Thanksgiving dinner and then we'll visit by Zoom or telephone or text or however we can reach family members. We don't intend to be alone, but we will be alone in our home and visit in the, in the ways that are acceptable to keep us safe. I know that that's become obviously the, the mode of communication between my kids and my parents, uh, my husband's parents. So I'm kind of grateful that we've got the wheels under us for how to do that mode of communication effectively, but it is different around the holidays, huh? When we'd normally yeah. be holding hands uh, to say grace around the table, we can't do that this year. Well, I think it's, uh, it's a small price to pay for staying safe, staying healthy, and maybe even saving a life. I agree, absolutely. And the county data agrees as well, where the majority of case spread right now is from inside of households. So it, it really is about uh, life and death in some tragic cases, uh, decisions between household members. So I wish you and your husband a very safe and uh, surprisingly joyful, I hope, Thanksgiving at home, Zooming with your family. Thank you. And I wish you the same with good health and happiness. You know, I would like to take a minute, if it's okay, and just thank the... Um, the caregivers who are working so hard to keep us all safe and to serve those who are sick. I know just within Intermountain, and I'm the chair of their board, we've had 2,392 caregivers get COVID. Oh and that's God. while they're serving those who are sick. And among those, we've had four deaths. So they are really putting their life on the line and it's up to us to remove that stress and anxiety from them so that they can enjoy a Thanksgiving holiday as well. And I think it's also important to point out that it's not just the elderly who are getting COVID. There are so many in the age group from 15 to 44 who are getting it. Just in the statistics for Intermountain, there are 104 thousand four hundred and thirty five cases in that age group and uh, so I think it's important as we gather as families to make sure that we wear our masks because we never know who's carrying it that's right and Gail what do you what advice do you have or opportunities can you see on the horizon given that you know our case numbers continue to climb um, there's a likelihood based on what happened with Canada celebrating Thanksgiving in October and their case tracing pointing directly to family gatherings for that holiday that we're going to continue to see even more cases after Thanksgiving going toward the Christmas holiday and other holidays. What do you see as an opportunity for families who you know, desperately miss traditional feelings and gatherings? What can we do? Well, I think the most important thing we can do is try to remember that this hopefully is not going to be forever. It's a temporary situation. And if we get a hold of it, we can go back to those joyful reunions and have those wonderful experiences together. But it's not too much to ask 
to follow the CDC guidelines right now so that we have that future that we can look forward to. And they work. They really do work. It's mm -hmm. when we bend the curve, bend the, the rules that they don't work. So we have to, you know, we have to remember this is not a fight against each other. It's a fight against an illness and we have to win. We really have to win. Well, I will uh, unabashedly just say I'm all in and I appreciate the way that you've been all in. Um, any event opportunities in the downtown area that you're able yes. to coordinate? Thank you for asking. We are going to do some really fun things as our company is sponsoring the month of December as a driven to celebrate opportunity. And some of the things that we're doing is we're opening up our theaters to people who can safely go and watch a free holiday movie one, once a week through December. So that's one thing we can do. Another thing is we're having a toy and a food drive at our dealerships and our movie theater locations so that we can help those who are in a difficult time financially provide their Christmas for their kids and, and have food. We also are going to stream and televise some, con some concerts. Uh, one includes choirs and uplifting messages and popular performers so that we'll get a little fun and a little joy during the month of December. We're also encouraging everyone downtown, Erin, to light up their buildings and to create that festive feel downtown with all the Christmas lights that we can bring because we can see them whether we're out and about, we can still see them as we drive through the city. And then we're also doing a Festival of Trees event at the arena, and that will be uh, done by, by Zoom. It'll be done virtually, but it's intended to help the medical community, Primary Children's Hospital, raise money through the Festival of Trees. And I go over to the arena and walk every morning, so I get to see it every day. And it's going to be really fun. So I um, hope people will realize that December is going to be a time to celebrate in the middle of what we're dealing with and to maybe put all of that on hold as we do what we're supposed to do, but enjoy some of the events of December as a community together. That is amazing and uh, not surprising coming from you and your organization, but thank you for finding so many ways for the community to feel the spirit of the season uh, and do it in a safe way, also in ways that can support our communities who need it most um, from, from families and individuals to the hospitals and our healthcare providers. I think uh, it's fantastic. And I'm so grateful that you are part of our community and that okay. you invest your heart and your energy here as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate the opportunity and thanks for being such a good mayor and letting us do all this. <laughs> Have a it's, great holiday. Thanks. It's my pleasure. And City Hall will be lit up this year. Wonderful. And in the meantime, until the end of November, you can hop down there on the east side of the building is a special art exhibit called Illuminate, where there are light projections actually kind of doing things with the architecture of the building. It's really neat. And it's every night. You can watch it from your car or wear a mask if you go out on Washington Square. Then we'll transition to holiday lights after that. If you, if you who are watching need any advice on how to safely hold your holidays, please go to cdc.gov. They have some great advice on a million different ways that people might be able to do uh, the holidays safely. Take care, be well. We will get through this stronger together. See you next time.